So now let's go ahead and set up the materials for this scene. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go here to Window, Material Manager. That'll put it right in the middle, which is totally fine. And I've already deleted the material assignments in my scene. So if I just right click over here and say Delete Unused, it's going to delete all my materials. So let's create a new Redshift material. If I just click here, it's going to create a new default material. Because we're in the Redshift renderer in our settings, it's just going to create a new Redshift material. Of course, you can long hold this and go in here to materials. You can make a new standard material or what we're going to be doing later, a volume material. Uh, but in this case, just an RS material is fine. I'm going to drag that onto my head here. It's a little shiny, so I'm going to select the material, go down here to the base properties, take roughness, uh, reflection roughness up a bit. And now let's apply, apply our displacement map. Uh, so we're going to double click our RS material. It's going to go into this view, which is, is the same thing as this view right here. It's just the tabs are over here on the left as opposed to across the top. Uh, however, I do want to go into this node editor here. So we'll go ahead and close this window and keep this node editor open. I'm going to hold down Alt and just kind of put this up here so you can still see what's happening when I'm IPR rendering, uh, but we can still see our settings here. So now, uh, in order to get our displacement to show up, one thing we need definitely is our displacement map. So I'm just going to click and drag that EXR that we created out of ZBrush right into our scene here. And while we're in here, let's go ahead and drag our head color uh, into our object. Um, in order to bring in, I mean, you saw me just drag and drop a file. It automatically made a texture node for us. If you want to do it a little bit slower way, hit C and then start typing texture. And then you can grab a texture node and then you can bring in a texture through this node. But again, if you just drag something in, it'll automatically create a texture node for you. Uh, in the case of the color, all we got to do is take this out color boom, right in here, and we're good to go. Um, for displacement, you're going to see the RS material section of our nodes does have a bump map selection, but the displacement is over here on the output. You can't just drag your color into displacement. It has to go through a node first, and that node is, if you hit C, is the displacement node. So let's go ahead and grab this one. Uh, right underneath it is the displacement blender. That's what I was talking about earlier, where if you want to bake a displacement for your uh, primary and secondary forms, like your subdivision level one through three, you can bake a displacement map for that. And then a sub another displacement map baked from subdivision level three to six, let's say. You can bake both those separately and then bring them in here and then blend them together using the displacement blender. Uh, in our case, we're just using displacement. So I'm just going to drag displacement in here. I'm going to go from the displacement texture, the out color, drag it right on top, say inputs texture, texture map, and then the out of the displacement into the input of the displacement on here. So now when we click our head displacement here, you're going to see these are the attributes for the image itself. The displacement node has its own set of properties, and then our output node uh, has its own set of properties, and then here's your material settings here. So again, going back to displacement, because this is a 32-bit displacement here, this is already set up exactly how it should be. You have uh, the range min and max set from 0 to 1, so basically black to white. Now, if this was a 16-bit displacement map, what you'd have to do is come in here to the new range min and max and set this one to negative 0.5 and then positive 0.5. Basically, what's happening is a 32-bit displacement is it goes from the darkest black is the lowest value and the lightest light is the highest value and a 16-bit displacement map it kind of starts in the middle and then it goes up with white and then down with darker values. But like I said before, the displacement node as it is, is perfect for a 32 bit displacement. So you may be thinking, great, our displacement's all set up. Why can't we see it in our render view here? And that's because uh, we're rendering with Redshift and we need to tell Redshift that this is a displacement and how to handle it. So we're gonna right click our head. So remember when we right clicked our plane and added a Redshift object to the plane so that we had access to some extra cool things in here like the matte capabilities. Uh, same thing for our head. We're going to right click the head, go in here to render tags, down here to redshift objects. So now the head has a redshift tag. And of course, if you wanted to, you could, you know, set up the matte stuff for the head. Of course, we don't need the head as a shadow catcher. What I need is to go over here to geometry. This is where our tessellation and displacement uh, settings are. So we can go in here to override. We'll go ahead and enable tessellation. And you're going to see when we do that, it gives us a nice smooth subdivided looking result and then over here under displacement we can click enabled and again it's still not doing much now there are some extra special settings if we go over here in the zbrush there's some very specific things you can load in as far as like the scale and intensity and you know between 62 16 bit and 32 bit etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, i was playing it pretty fast and loose and again i'm going from a very low res object to 
trying to get my displacement to work. And really, this maximum displacement, I just cranked it all the way up to the right. And then displacement scale, click cranked it all the way to the right. And that basically dialed in the effect I was looking for, which is take this really low res mesh and then render it as if it was really high res. So that way I can, in Cinema 4D, go through and do my really bouncy soft body stuff on a very low res object, but still have the final result look very high res or hundred, you know, the 140,000 poly version of what I want to render. Now, again, there may be a more elegant way to go about this. There may be a way to say, let me have, you know, my subdivision level two or subdivision level three object in Cinema 4D. I can bake a normal map in that case. And then maybe I can use like a proxy low res envelope wrap deformer in Cinema 4D to run my simulations on and then have that drive the higher polygon uh, mesh on the fly. It's probably possible. I don't know how to do it. So this is the route I took. If I ever end up going down that rabbit hole at some point, I'll uh, update this video or I'll at least link you to that one. But in the meantime, we have our object over here and we're ready to simulate. And I'm not going to get into breaking up the roughness on this material at this point. I'll do that at the very end. Uh, it's not that interesting. 